Bamboos is all about using bamboos. You can eat it, you can make medicine from it. Our food is lacking minerals and we're buying in minerals as supplements to put back in. What they're missing is that this enormous amount of mental health struggles is also coming from food. We have a lot of kids who are coming up on the spectrum. I was told I was on the spectrum. As a kid, I wasn't able to sit still, focus, or read. But as a 56-year-old woman, I challenge anybody out there to come work with me. Our potential It's exponential Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of the Abundant Souls podcast. Today I have Shanti in the house. Thank you for coming. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, and this we, is such a pleasure. Oh and my goodness. Amazing guava. <laughs> amazing guava juice. Yeah, Holy right. smokes. Like, yes, it's an honor to have you, honestly. This place this is here great. and everything. And I just want to start by saying mm -hmm. like, I I'm so impressed with everything you're doing and I'm so grateful because Jack's going to be at the Convergence, you guys. Do not miss this Convergence because we do this whole platform. This is something we put in last year on our um, Villages Day. So we at the Villages Day is on Saturdays. And I'll just say, like, let's just step back a minute and say what the Convergence is. Yeah, what We're is the verbal go into Bamboo in a minute, but let's talk about the yeah. Convergence first. The Convergence is a three-day event in December. It's at Wonderfield Farm, and it's all about homesteading. So it is hands-on, farm-to-table meals all weekend, and it's the cheapest, most intense way that you can jumpstart your growing, your learning, your what to do, you know, all these things. And one of the things that Jack's going to help us with is last year we implemented an economics platform and the economics platform is for all of you guys who who come to me and are like hey we love growing food in our backyard we love permaculture but like how do we sustain ourselves doing mm, this like totally. can i make a living at it right yeah. and this is and what by the you way, do it's amazing i've been to a couple of these and that's how we got connected yeah permaculture convergence and yeah. it's amazing and it's about homesteading and all those things it's amazing it's yeah. a t it's a total immersion event. Yes. Which is the best way to yeah. learn. Yeah. A few years ago, my friend David and I, who partner on putting this together, we came up with a new structure for the event. So Friday nights is micro talks. This year, we're focusing on all the things we highlighted this a little bit last year with Jess and Mitch about what you can create in a year. And so the micro talks mm. this year are all about what people have done. Wow from convergence to convergence, because you can do a lot in one year. So a good. lot, people have bought farms, they've started businesses, it's they've true. grown whole farms, they've grown food, right? And I love what you're saying, yeah, it's exactly, it's like, it's, it's inspiring. You wanna see those yes. models, like you need to see the models in yeah. order to like do them, right? Yeah. Like, oh, he did, like, I remember going to Matt Reese's place, who's amazing, we all, Matt's. Matt's the best. He's the best. Yeah, he really He's the is. Best. He really is. He was the first he's one to be on this it. this podcast. He was the first one. Yeah. Which is an right. epic because he's epic. Yeah. But what but he but anyways he Pro has, Agroforestry. Yeah, Pro Agroforestry. <laughs> Shout out Matt. Peace River Organics. <laughs> hey. And I wanna get into all of it. Like you're he has a bunch of bamboo. You mm -hmm. know all about the bamboo. We'll get yeah. into it. But let's since we're talking about it, let's talk more about the Permaculture, yeah. I love that concept. Like, yeah. what can you do in a year? Yeah, so really. that'll be what we're focusing our micro talks. Last year, what we did was we had a couple, Jess and Mitch, they're from Grateful Soul Farms. Amazing. He is a first responder. She is a professional, former professional athlete turned permaculture farmers, wow. right? And the whole concept was they came to the convergence the year before and like, from one year coming to the Convergence and being like, what is permaculture? They met Lonnie, they started a farm and they like grew it out. So it was like, wow. this is what you can do in what seems like, you know, you just, and not even on like a full-time basis, right? So the whole thing of the micro talks this year is all about 
what people have done from convergence to convergence, mm. right? What did you do in a year, right? I love that. And that's, that's there's so much. Yeah. You're doing so much. Oh, like, thank you. Yeah. And it takes time. And, it, and, and then think about this. Like, imagine what we could do in five years. Right. Like, that's when it gets crazy. Well, here's like, we my really mantra. This is my actual mantra that I go through every single day, which is actionable, attainable, goals, mm. actionable and actionable steps for attainable goals. Right. So for example, what, well, for instance, I, if you put carbon farming, bamboo and biochar all in one sentence, you just attracted like half of the scammers in the world. I swear to mm. it is a thing. How so? So because this whole thing about carbon farming and biochar and the bamboo and the green gold and all, and all this stuff. And it's, it's, it's a is lot right? of like talking and big money and big investors and stuff, but there's right. just a lot of like just churning and nothing like actually happening. Effective, there are some things happening, nothing, but there's nothing effective or impact going on. Yeah, to how it actionable be. steps. Action. Actionable steps for attainable goals. And so, like, what, what's because by the way, permaculture conversions is a lot of these. And this is know, this like, is where it comes back to. Right. So it's like. For me, what I have to, because I'll get these calls a lot about like, we want to farm bamboo, we want to, you know, mm. carbon farm, we want to do biochar, we, like all these big, big right. stuff. They right? have they have the vision. They have a vision. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you need action. So then I come back to the convergence. Mm. The convergence is a really clear for me, actionable steps for attainable goals. And so, you know, like Saturday, for instance, for people who don't want to come for the whole weekend, we have tickets for just Saturday. Saturday is our village set, um, situation. So mm, basically we have market. six different villages. Yeah. Economics village, first aid village, plant village, homesteading village. And each one of these villages has teaching going on simultaneously. So there's six different classes. And at the same time, we have a maker's village which is bamboo building and like hands-on natural mm, building. Kids running around. Bringing in James Wolf from, he is originally, has been spending the last 25 years in Vietnam. He built for the green school. I mean, he's going to be teaching bamboo building this year. Like what? It's going to be amazing. There's so, a lot of, there's, there's a, a lot yeah. of going on and it's no PowerPoints. There's mm. no PowerPoints. These are all hands-on demonstrations and like how to and doing it. Amanda on a, on Pike a, on a farm, on a farm, on a 65 acre permaculture farm. Amanda right. Pike is crazy. Amanda Pike is coming this year. She's doing some crazy class on like sourdough bread making <sighs> with like mango seeds. I mean, yeah. she's <laughs> off the chain. Yeah, yeah. Okay. She yeah. is like, <laughs> last year she did five things you could do with green bananas, right? Yeah. Like she's writing a cookbook right now. If you don't have her other cookbook, get it yes. because it's a go to. Shout out Amanda. She's, yeah. she's a mile from here. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. She's. I send people Crushing her it. way all the time. Like it's a lineup. Yeah. And by the way, guys, lineup. if you have any thought, Oh, I've been wanting to get into homesteading. I mm -hmm. want to learn all this stuff. I don't know where to start. Yeah. This is a perfect event to honestly yeah. show up for Thanks. yourself. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's a beautiful proximity, and, man. To and the... we've got kitchens going. <laughs> so we have a salad kitchen going, a vegetarian kitchen and a carnivore kitchen. Wow. And like Lonnie's doing cooking with fire. Like, we do farm to they table. They cook up everything up there. We cook the... everything farm to table. Yeah. We no, do, totally. Like, people were bringing yep. fruits. People and like bring fresh, food and fruits fresh, and vegetables. Fresh. Everything is from people's farms. It's like. So tell us about that. Yeah. Like people, the kitchen's buzzing. The kitchens the... are amazing. We have some great chefs who like just pump stuff out. I mean, we fed 450 people last I was gonna, year. That's what I was going to Farm ask. to table. 450. 450 people. Yeah. And so. it was like, everyone was thrilled and happy yeah. and abundant. Yeah. yeah. Can you, believe, yeah. that's like Bible stuff, you know? It's great. And it's, there's something for everybody. And we really want, like, we want our families to feel, we want everybody to feel comfortable to interface, like what mm. feels comfortable for them. Yeah. So like, and by the way, when I say that, I meant just not to interject, but like close to bringing it back to our roots. That's what Absolutely. I mean. What our ancestors used to do. Absolutely. Like and right. getting, you know, growing food, how to grow it. This is Florida. This is just tropics and subtropics. It's, we're not in Indiana. Like 
Yes. What do you do? What are the plants? Sunday is all about plants. So it's like which plants, how to plant, nature walks, foraging. Mm. You know, I mean, a lot of people don't know. I eat a lot of Bidens. Yeah. And people pull it out and throw it away. Like I use it as, like Lonnie said in his podcast, I use it as a chop and drop. I eat that every day. Yeah. Like me too. I think we, we were weeding out this this garden I was eating yeah. like while well, I was weed whack and yeah. keep, just keep going. But like one of the biggest disconnects, and this is the thing <laughs> that we want to address, is like mm. it's not that you can't produce enough food to eat. It's that you have to switch your mindset, right? So you have to switch around as to what you can grow. So like a really good exercise for people to do is to write down a diary of what they eat, right? And then put a, another column next to that and try and figure out what you're going to grow as a substitute, right? That's at which time exercise. of year. It's a great exercise for people because I like, did that at my workshop, actually, at the that's master perfect. class. That's exactly what, yeah. what do I like to eat? That's exactly what yep. I did. Yeah, because you're not getting <laughs> Bidens at the grocery store. So right. how do you know that that's something that you're going to eat? But if and you, you see, eat spinach, you're exactly you could right. switch it out. And right? by the way, if you don't eat eggplant, cool. It grows well here, cool. But if you don't eat it, whatever. But they don't grow it. But you're right, exactly. Fill in your menu. Yeah. yeah. Fill in your mango. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no. No, I said menu. 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 Yeah. I give fill in your mango too. Fill in your mango. Seriously. But you can't survive we on sugar. And mm. FYI, like, I will say, that I have problems processing sugar so like yes. doing a lot of sugar like okay there are certain people who go out there and try and be fruitarians and you know if you can make that work good on you but like yeah, yeah, yeah. you need other food yeah right and i feel that way too yeah like minerals, you need other minerals. things we could get down the rabbit hole but i want to and yeah. by the way your point before we, we we'll like, transition you, to bamboo yeah that's what i was gonna do yes. yeah, yeah, yeah 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 uh like what you what you were saying is so real though. It's like okay, I can make curry with you know chickens from who knows where from Tyson, or I could use. I'm just thinking my neighbor made jackfruit seed curry, and it was so good. So and there's good. protein in there. It's from so jackfruit. Good. There's so many jackfruit seeds. So good. So it's like you just pull me up because it's like okay, I had lunch and it's like wow, this really came from the tree out there. Jackfruit seeds are one of my favorite proteins. Yeah. So yummy. I learned it at the first permaculture conversion. Oh, really? Yeah. Ah, Jules, I think someone came up with some, yeah, and I was like, wow. Jules. I love he, Jules. She's great. Garden Jules, guys. She's great. She's awesome. Shout out, Jules. That's right. We give shout outs the whole time. Absolutely. Really, There's so many amazing we, people. We love our community, yeah. And this yeah. is the whole thing about the convergence is like you come and meet and like literally you just get put right in the middle of all the people in Florida that are doing it, like a lot of them, okay, mm -hmm. not everybody, but like a lot of yes. people who are doing it and living it and like making it happen. Such good stuff. Yeah, like let's just leave it at that because honestly, yeah. it's so good. You'll be, yeah. you'll so, have high expectations and you, it'll, it'll meet yeah. those. December and, 6th through the 8th, Wonderfield hey. Farm, tickets on sale now, early bird tickets, few more days. Amazing. Floral yeah. City. Yeah. Floral we should do City. like, yeah, 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 which is a beautiful so. name. Well, yeah. Sick. Now we can talk about bamboo. <laughs> yes. So exactly. You're the bamboo queen, oh, goddess yes. of bamboo. Yeah. And honestly, yeah, it's such good stuff. Like I, I have so many questions yeah. and all the uses of bamboo. But first, like what are your three favorite varieties mm. and what are the benefits we can get into? But yeah. what are your faves? Yeah. So I came here originally to work um, on the Animal Kingdom project for Imagineering. So I got to be a part of that. And that really Amazing. put me in. Yeah, I was an ornamental grass and bamboo specialist for them oh, during that project. At the Animal Kingdom. Uh, during construction. So I opened that's, Africa and Asia. That's too yeah. cool. I've and been there. I mean, you know, I grew it's, up there. Yeah. And we put what? so many plants in. But the, for giraffes the and reason, all those things. Yeah. Well, the reason I like to go back to that is that what ended up happening is like, okay, so that was in the in the mid to late 90s. And I was literally planting 
for food. I was also plant. I mean, I was multi-tiering, right? So like we're planting for privacy, we're planting for theming, we're planting, like it's an art immersion, like we're doing all the things. Yeah, it's a, and it's we're a show. walking through with machetes and like, you know, <laughs> and climbing trees. I was like, all of my skill sets have come to use now, wow. you know? But we're planting for animals, right? Like right. we are planting for animals to eat. We are planting for containments, for animals' habitat, for the live-in. And so the idea of really hit home for me about planting not only for animals, but just the idea of planting for edibility of all people and animals, right? Amazing. So this is like pre even talking about what silvopasture is and we were doing it, right? In the, in the 90s. Mm. Right. We were doing it. But you were just putting, you were using that design framework mm -hmm. of, right, what does this animal need? What habitat Is it edible? Is it toxic? Right. You know, and and bamboos went in every single containment. Is that right? Right? So tigers used them as scratching posts. Elephants ripped them out of the ground and ate them. Like every single animal ate them. Yeah. You know, even cats will chew on leaves and things like that. So the lion containment. But like everything from an otter to the Komodo dragon, every single animal had bamboo. The gorillas will fight over bamboo. Really? They love it. Wow. Yeah. So every so animal. Into, that's where you got into bamboo because it right. was in every little habitat. Well, I came there as a bamboo, spe an ornamental grass specialist, but I was from a northern region. So I was coming from Maryland and those plants and we were bringing the plants down and they're like, we have no idea what these plants are. Like, how do you use them? Right. But from there, I got into the tropical bamboos because we were using tropical bamboos like crazy. Plus, we had a 10 acre um forage farm. So that is a farm that was just planted out to harvest, to feed back to the animals. And wow. of course we had bamboo in it, right? So what is in the forage farm? We had hibiscus, bananas, bamboos, some grasses, right? All the things that you feed back to the animals. The That's diet. On the forage the farm, diet of the... Right? And this is in the 90s. Like it was way before anybody's talking about this stuff. So, so it was really great because it was wow. like got and me into the concept of like utilizing bamboo and not just to look at it, but like you're using it for multi-tiered things, right? So I bought my farm and then I started planting bamboos. I got some from Disney and I got, I mean, at the time nobody had bamboos. Like it was, was what, like. Was he down there, a tropical bamboo? Is no. That what, really? No, 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 no. Where'd you I guys was get way up? before him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I Robert have, and I are great friends. You mean cool? He's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Well, I have yet to meet him. Yeah, yeah he's, he's great. a cool cat. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful place. And um, yeah, none of these farms existed. I mean, there were like a few people here and there. I joined the American Bamboo Society. There was a guy named Richard Waldron that was running it at the time, and he was like a plant and people person. And he would give me some plants, and he would find other plants and stuff, you yeah. know. But it was like, there just wasn't, it's not like now, like where there's mm. bamboos all over the place, right? So it's it a big was, industry. People, I don't, you know, mm -hmm. I heard from, I hear from old timers. It's just like maybe a little secret. People don't want to know, but whatever. They were like, yo, bamboo's the really, the cash crop. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity, what I'm trying to say, in yeah. propagating these because there's so much uses. Well, and there's the, so much variety. We have really good product here because we have clumping bamboos, yeah. right? So, yeah, exactly. so we have clump, so we got clumping and running bamboos <laughs> and we just because everybody's going to hate on me except the Floridian people down here is that bamboos is all about using bamboos, right? So uh, my biggest thing I'm pushing with education is about utilization because the, even the small ones get pretty big. <laughs> exactly. However, here in Florida, we have clumping bamboos, which is a great product. Like most of my friends who farm up north or in the Pacific Northwest and stuff, they do about 80% removal and 20% planting because it's runners. Start here and go there. I've seen it. Yeah. All up north. It's a problem. It's, and they, it's a problem. And it, honestly, no, but I love what you're saying because it's two different types. Yeah. People up north, they like have this psychological thing where all bamboo is bad. Yeah. It's a, a nightmare. Down here, we have clumpers. Clumping That's what you're bamboo. saying, right? right? And within the clumping bamboo, like, okay, people aren't hating on mangoes and that's a big plant too, but you keep it small, there right? So we live in the tropics, plants want to get big. 
when you want to keep them small, you just hack them back that, and you keep hacking it back. And that's called biomass. Here we have nutrient cycling that goes really, really quickly because we have poor soil, but we create a lot of biomass really fast. That's the typical subtropical, tropical, whether you're in Costa Rica or you're here, or you know, we have poor soils, but a lot of biomass is generated. And bamboos are one of those things. They're producing high mineral content biomass all the time yeah. that you can put back into your plants. Minerals is the biggest thing that we are really lacking in everything. I mean, everybody by now knows that our food is lacking minerals and we're buying in minerals as supplements that's to put back in. That's right. You know, we are struggling in so many ways on health and people recognize, I think, like the cancers and the things like that on health and they recognize is that coming from food. What they're missing is that this enormous amount of mental health struggles is also coming from food. This is your biggest thing that you want to protect and you want to protect it with minerals. And one of the easiest ways is to grow foods that have a lot of minerals. Mm -hmm. And one of them is bamboo. Wow. And so you can literally grow your medicine. Amazing. Grow your medicine. <laughs> to, right? If you feed the bamboo. <clears throat> The bamboo figures it out for itself. That's it right, doesn't right. need to be fed. It's all in the bi it's already in the bamboo. It will figure it out. So bamboo. <laughs> it grows. Are I don't like, do anything out here. Yeah. Because it'll figure it out. What it does, it's like what I consider, I don't know if you've ever heard of this terminology called the mother tree. So there was a woman from Canada who um, did a lot of research in forestry, and she found out that basically when you clear cut a forest and then replant it, it doesn't grow nearly as fast back as if you keep some of these so-called mother plants, mm. birch trees and things like that. They happen to be plants that are also extremely fungal dominant, right? Interesting. Extremely fungal dominant because they are the mother. They're holding all these fungal connections. And when you plant the trees back into the forest, they are immediately inoculating them and helping them to grow. Because what trees and bamboos need is they need these fungal connections in order to grow. They are so connected to funguses that it's at a cellular level. It's almost inside the nucleus. That's how connected they are. Bamboo. And bamboo and trees. Right. And trees too, but bamboos especially. So bamboos, I look at it as being this fungal connection. And so when you put them in your yard or you put them in your food forest and stuff, they call in these funguses and bacteria and they make that available. We think that there's all this competition and there is some competition, but okay. in general, plants are sharing. When one plant is not doing well, other plants are asked to share back to them. Right. And bamboos are one of those plants. They're what I call a social equalizing plant because they do really well and are very resilient. And they're asked by the community to give back what they have in abundance. And that's how they give back to the forest. Wow. And so these are really important plants to put into the environment and the ecosystem because they are holding those fungal and bacterial hubs for the other plants to come in and connect and utilize so that you can grow better food. It's mother, cool stuff. The cool stuff, man, the mother tree. Oh, the mother tree. It's beautiful. Yeah. And so bamboos can do that. And you can grow bamboos at different sizes, right? So in tropical bamboos, we consider like the mid size to be like the 20s. But even on those plants, you can hack them down and keep them at four feet tall. Exactly. That's what they do in Palm Beach and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all about but, utilization, utilizing mm, it. So like, yeah, did let's you, get into right? That. Like, do you know that your bamboo is a perennial vegetable? It's a perennial vegetable that you're growing out in your yard and you can eat it. You can make medicine from it. These are things like, like back at Animal Kingdom was like first starting to like inoculate, right? Exactly. My mind of like, oh, I get it, right? It's not just for pandas. Like I That's have right. two bamboos now that are edible raw. A lot of the runners, by the way, people hate on the runners, but some of those are edible raw. Pseudosasa japonica, which people hate on Pseudosasa japonica. You can break it off and eat it. Wow. That's amazing. Wow. Right? Like so, asparagus or something. Right. So like if you knew that bamboo could fix like your arthritis, your bone density, make your hair grow like crazy, 
like build collagen in your skin, like build your cardiovascular system and help it be more resilient, help you to be more resilient. Would you hate on it as much if it was doing all those things for you? You might actually highly value Mm. it in your yard and use it. And so how do you do that? You can eat the shoots. You can make tea from the leaves. Guys, I love that. So the perennial vegetable is the shoots Mm -hmm. when you cut them when they're young. Yep. And then the medicine, if you will, or is the tea. Right. And then the shoots are a superfood in themselves too, right? Every single mineral. Right. It's manganese, copper, which is really hard to get in a lot of people's diets. Um, silica is the number one. So silica is... That's what I hear is, with, with bamboo, yeah. with the biochar. Yeah. Like, there's, yeah. Silica wow. is strength and flexibility. Strength and flexibility of every single cell in your body. So that translates into like just all every single part of you is stronger more resilient and more flexible including your mind and your mindset right the biggest thing that we can practice utilizing is our mind and making it stronger because everything that we do whether it's working outside in the sun or like a Wim Hof method going the opposite way, getting into a cold plunge or stuff. This is all about exercising and strengthening your mindset. Wow. And looking at things differently. Like I eat a lot of cactus, right? You can't hardly buy cactus in the store. Right. Super the, high in minerals, again, by the way, right. another mineral food. The nopales. <clears throat> nopales, right? Yeah. But like if people change their mindset as to what they could eat that they can grow you could easily produce the amount of food you need those grow without any care oh my gosh abundant oh my gosh wow (laughs) like a big amount so you yeah and like it tastes like kind of like green peppers or something they're my favorite nopales are like everybody should be growing up they just grow themselves yeah that's so you take the young pads and how do you use them you can use the entire thing wow yeah i cook them up so here's my go-to meal Biden's, cactus, bamboo shoots, fermented something. Usually it's bamboo shoots or something else. Whatever I've had, I love fermented mustard greens because mustard greens, like once you plant them once, they come up everywhere. Yes. Right? So I, and once you ferment something, you can have jars of it just sitting there. You don't have to refrigerate it or anything. Uh It's just sitting up there. So you just take something down and open it up, whether it's bamboo shoots or something else, put that in there. Yeah, the fridge just like slows it down, right? It's a, it doesn't- It doesn't need to be refrigerated. Do, it doesn't need it to, can sit for years. Yeah. I've lost jars <laughs> for years that were fermented, like bamboo shoots, wow. and they're still fine. They're just sitting back there doing their thing. I never can them or anything. I have to get, I want to give you some kimchi from- <gasps> I it's good kimchi. yeah it's the ultimate oh my gosh it's Same been cooking five, five or six months and they're per- it's perfect mm. it's so perfect saint pete ferments sarah okay. did this bamboo shoot kimchi two years yeah. ago that was so good with your bamboo girl, shoes yeah that girl is a genius what's in her fermenting. name sarah? sarah with saint pete ferments amazing she does all like farm vegetables fermentation is its own thing too it's amazing that sounds so good so you can ferment a lot of bamboo shoots are good to ferment you know that's a great way to store them so it's all about like storing and having food and what can you do and it's like right because a lot of people might be like oh wait how do i use it they see and by the way that's a block for most plants i've noticed for people like yes they don't know how to use it right so maybe like what's the way like the tea, the leaves, that's so easy. How do people do that? So with your shoots, you want to harvest them Uh when they're about eight inches. So this is that little pyramid that's coming up. All, any of the shoots can be used. They have a cyanic glycoside, most of them, unless there's a few out there that you can eat raw, but they'll have a cyanic glycoside. Same thing that's in cassava, right? So that's these bitter compounds. You can become a little more acclimated to a little bits of it. And the whole medicinal side of that is a whole nother thing. But in general, you want to cook out. These are heat dissipated. You can cook them for about 30, 40 minutes. And then sometimes I'll add salt or I'll add biochar or things like that to kind of pull out the more bitter ones. You may need to change the water out a couple of times. But then you have a chunk of a bamboo shoot that you can use for a lot of different things. One of my favorite ways to do it 
is macerate it from there, put it in an oven and turn it into a flower like you do with uh, green banana flour. You can make a bamboo flower. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Yeah. And then it's shelf stable for a decade, right? Exactly. Like, I mean, it never goes bad. Oh, you just cook it up and boil it and <clears throat> yeah, enjoy yeah. it. Yeah, use it in anything. Use it in anything you would use flour for, right? So I'll use a lot of shoots. So I'll just add them into what I'm already making. So I have them boiled, and then I'll just add them into, like, my Bidens, my cactus, and stuff like that that I eat. And it's a huge amount of food that you're producing wow. in a small area. So shoots only come once a year. What you can do is you can either freeze or make flour or ferment them after boiling. And then that makes them so that you can have food during the year. Because, of course, our biggest thing, if you want to eat off the land, is like, you know, mangoes only come in the summer right. and bamboo shoots only come in the summer. Seasonality. Totally. right? Cactus, you... by the way, you have all year round. There you go. Exactly. <laughs> Katuk, you have year round. Katuk. Stuff like that. <clears throat> yeah. But what you're saying, you're right. So all the bamboo shoots come once a year. That's right. a good tip. Right. When does it come? It depends on the variety. So some will come early, as early as like May. In general, bamboos will wait for it to rain. Got right? it. Right? They love water. They so love in, it. they're tropical, subtropical. That's how I understood it, like the spring when it heats up. Kind mm -hmm. of but some spring. will come even without the rain. Like Beachiana is the largest subtropical bamboo. So it'll get six inches in Orlando. The largest subtropical. So people Diameter, you're saying? It's a diameter. Yeah, it's a big bamboo. <sighs> On year three bamboo, I have it growing five inches right now. Year oh three God. from a three gallon. These things really do make like, forests. They get <clears throat> huge quick. Well, and it just makes me crazy. Like if you want to grow something for a bamboo shoot, that's your bamboo. Right. Right. It's a bigger. Like, it's a bigger, chunkier thing. That's it. You know, don't put asper up so, in Orlando when it's a mm. tropical and doesn't even like being that far Let's north. See, there like you grow go. Beachiana. See, this is what I want to bring you on. So Beachiana does better in that core. It'll grow all the way up to St. Augustine. And they get big shoes. And then it stays, it'll go down to like the low 20s. Wow. Big shoes. So let's shoots, get into that. And shoots. by the way, you're making a good point. You want to harvest them all and then basically process them and then freeze mm -hmm. them. So right. Yeah. So that you have them for like later. So something. that you have mineral content all year if, round. If yeah, you, yeah. So that's with your bamboo shoots that are superfood. With your tea, Which, you can harvest all year. I especially like the teas in the winter time. And my number one tea, my number one go-to, is uh, Sea Breeze. So Sea Breeze has is, that right? is my. It's just it's got a certain smell to it and a certain taste, which has just been my go-to all the way across the board. Sea Breeze is an amazing plant. I gotta try. Yeah, <laughs> isn't that? Yeah, I mean they call it Sea Breeze because it handles the salt well, right or not? Nah? Not really. No bamboos handle salt. Got it. However, it has a very, very thick leaf. Fern leaf would be similar. And so that thicker leaf makes it more resilient, but it gets fried. Yeah. If it's, it needs this to be year is, protection. Yeah. I don't know. Like all of these properties on the islands that I work with, Jupiter Island, mm -hmm. Palm Beach, shredded from the salt too. There's like times a year too. I think it's just like, mm -hmm. like where it's like that mist. Right. Mist flows in and it just fries it's not everything. Good, good so right. in those kind of situations, what I'll do is I'll make a block in front of it with something like a sea grape. Love that. So sea grapes are a great way to protect your bamboo in a salty situation. Well, they can protect a lot of different That's things, That's but right. they're a big protector and they can take all the salt spray. So if you want, if you're near the ocean and you want that, the other way is to put it behind the building. So yes. like use Always. your building to protect whatever your plant is that's more sensitive that can't take yeah. the salt. You know, that's for you oceanfront people. Uh, yeah, that's right. right? I yeah. learned that the hard way. Yeah, yeah they get people straight up. People are always you're asking right. me that. And you tell them, yeah. I love that you're straight up. You're like, listen, none of them have. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. Hey guys, just wanted to take a moment to talk about our sponsor, Urban Abundance. We help people grow food at home. And if that's something you're interested in doing, or maybe you don't know where to get started or it's a really overwhelming, but you want to grow food, give us a call today. We help you design, install, and maintain your garden. We do fruit trees. We help you with maintenance. And we just really want to make sure you're getting the result you want and you're growing food. So if that's something you're interested in, click the link below and get on your garden design phone call today. Let's get back to the video.
So let's get into it. You have so many years looking at these bamboo. What should I <laughs> a grow? A lot of them. Did you see a lot mine? Of them. Did you see that? I those? did. What you do you got think? a lot of different varieties. What do you it's think? awesome. And down here, we're talking like true tropics, so big guys. That's what right? I'm saying. Like, what should yeah. I be looking at if I'm like Palm Beach County South? Yeah. I like the dendros. A lot of the dendros are really good for shoots. I mean, the big, yeah, the big ones that are really popular are like asper, black asper. I also really like the dendros because of the colors. Like a black asper has a black shoot that, I mean, it's amazing, right? right? The Beautiful. black even transfers inside to the shoot. Like it's on the exterior on the calm sheet. But that's some serious medicine going on there. You've got like big wow. on antioxidants. I'll make teas from all the different parts of the bamboo, including the calm sheets even. Because there's all your color, right? Wow. Like color is medicine. Yeah. Color is medicine. So you want to utilize as much color as possible. Mm. And those dendros, some of them, like the shoots when they come up, actually have like red dripping down them. It's so much I've color. I've seen this. And my boy Crazy. Niels, I'm like, what? What is, is yeah. going on it's here? It's a phenomenon. Yeah. People don't realize. Yeah, you're right. It's magical, mm. the bamboo game. It's like, so much color. And by the way, wait, so you said asper. Asper, the, the black, black asper. asper. You could eat those. Yeah, the shoots, yeah. Why don't I have that one? Those are really good. But a lot of the dendros, you I'd can honestly, eat any of the shoots. My favorite shoot is yeah. Brindisii, sweet shoot Brindisii. Got it. And it's, uh, it's got a lot of hairs on the shoot, but the, the shoot itself is really sweet. Interesting. The sweet shoot Brindisii is a really good one. So what um, you're saying, because I got to mention this, because it's like, mm -hmm. it freaked me out when I was getting into bamboo. Andy, when Andy is taking us uh -huh. on bamboo walks, I go follow him yeah, at the bamboo Andy's workshop. Awesome. He's the best. Shout out Andy, Andy for Burke. He's gonna make <laughs> he's gotta make it on the show. Yes. He's the he's the best. Um he uh anyways, like would be they, do you get like some sort of like you said, there's like glockids, is that what they call it? Like mm -hmm. you, you the some little hairs. Exactly. So some bamboos have more than others, right? Yes. The dendros tend to have a lot of those. Some of the bambusas do. And this is a really good point, especially when you're talking about working with kids, because in areas where like garden centers or things where people are going to be interfacing with bamboos a lot, and especially kids, I want to use like a bambusa, something with a smooth calm that Got is it. touchable. So really good ones for touchability, old hammai, um, the uh, graceful is a good one. Those are classic. You know, these are like ones that are super smooth. They're fun to touch, and and they feel nice, and they're and they're fun to interact. That's with. good yeah. info. The yeah. the bambusa because these the dendrocalmus maybe are a little bit more like you want to wear. A gloves. lot of them are rough, and they have like some. It's hit or miss, but a lot of them have a lot more hairs on them. Those things that'll like irritate your skin and things like that. The graceful, it's like you touch it, it feels. Oh, fine. graceful, so smooth. It yeah, is. yeah, and it's pretty. Yeah. It's, but it's the number one plant used in Florida. Is that right? For bamboo. Yeah, the number one bamboo planted wow. in Florida. And what's, number, the, what's number two? Probably another text. Probably Old Hamai, actually. Yeah. But number fun. one, like, not even remotely close is graceful. And yeah. the reason is, yeah. is it's upright. It gets about 25 feet tall. It's got a beautiful long leaf. It's dense foliage. It's fast growing. And you can hedge it. Done. <laughs> like, Checks like, every like, box. Done. It's edible. Know. You can make tea from it. Seriously. You know? My my still my go-to favorite is Seabreeze. Seabreeze is a little <laughs> bit faster growing. It's bigger. You said it, your yeah, favorite. Seabreeze. It is my favorite. Seabreeze. It's faster growing. It does get about 40 feet tall, so it's a big plant. But as far as like it's the mm. biggest plant that during hurricane season has had the least amount of damage. Like it doesn't have any damage. God. It has so much silica that it literally flops back and forth. And what? here's a good piece of information, especially if you live near the coast. Old Hamai will come out of the ground. Is that right? So Old Hamai is super rigid and upright, fits into really small spaces, beautiful, big, chunky look. But in a storm, she immediately drops all her leaves. That's her go-to because she's got no wiggle room, right? Wow. Graceful will protect everything you have like it will block anything from coming into your property as will sea breeze which is like wow. the next size up 
So I've had people text me during hurricanes go, thank you so much for planting the bamboo because wow. there's something like a shed slammed up against the outside of the hedge, wow. right? You know, so bamboos will protect your house. Yeah, let's get into that for yeah, like- Yeah, that's huge for hurricanes. Wind, windbreak. Yeah, huge windbreak. And protect your food forest too. So think north winds, mm. things like that. Here's the cool thing about windbreaks. So if you do a concrete windbreak, the way that the wind goes is it goes up to and it dives. It's an engineering thing. So when the wind comes this way, it goes up and over and dives. When you have a green hedge as a windbreak, the wind comes up to it and it slowly dies. It's seven to 10 times the height. So if you have a 10 foot height, you're getting 70 to 100 feet past that in protection. Wow. That's enormous. Instead of a wall, you're saying? Instead of a wall. And so you're saying the sea breeze, is that the one you're saying? Mm -hmm. Goes sea breeze, 40 feet. 40 feet. So you protect a whole lot of So you, if you have the room for it, and you can go, hedge it. And they're established but, and all that. Yeah, if you have the room for it. And it only takes, a, you know, even the stuff that I plan in the spring, if we get a hurricane in the fall, is going to be pretty good, you know? So this is a good point. You need, you need kind of space for this. This is like people with, like you, you got a couple few acres up there. Well, I'll, you got I'll, space. Plant, I'll plant graceful, even sea breezes in smaller yards with the caveat uh -huh. that I have these conversations ahead of time with people so they know what they're getting into. Because the biggest mistake that people make is they think that bamboo doesn't need any maintenance. Mm. Maintenance is about goals, right? So like if you have a small yard and your goal is to put 50 fruit trees in it, you're going to have a lot of maintenance. Yeah. You got to hack back a yeah. lot of things, right? <laughs> maintenance is about goals. It's about goals. Simple. Right. What am I working towards? What am I maintaining? What, what do you need it to look? Because <laughs> if you want your place to look like a jungle, then you're good. Just let it do its thing. Exactly. You don't even have to plant anything. Exactly. Just, just so stop is, mowing. So you're talking stop about Stop mowing yeah. <laughs> and you're done. By the right? way, some but people. Like, <laughs> some people like, <laughs> but no, I love what you're saying. Like, what yeah. are your goals? Because, by the way, you're not, your goals might be different than my goals, even, and probably way different than well, someone over. Well, and sometimes these are external goals that are implemented, you know, that yeah. people have for us. Like, you have Goal an HOA. You're right? talking about. HOAs. Yeah. So. <sighs> Yeah. So those do, are things we that, do have to navigate with the HOAs. They see bamboo. They, by the right. way, they do it with veggie gardens too. They'll say, listen, we're not doing this. I'm like, Whoa. Yeah. No edibles. Like what about all these benefits? This, this, and that, like you just, you know, no edibles, no edibles, right? What What kind of world do we want to live in? I, like I have no idea. I know. It's craziness. Wow. Legalized fruit trees. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yes, yeah, seriously. Legalized man. fruit trees. <laughs> seriously. And bamboo, man. This is such good stuff. Oh, you're, gosh. You're I making me want to go just, yeah, plant a bunch of bamboo. <laughs> <laughs> Protect my food forest. Yeah, make, make tea from it. Feed okay. it to your animals. Feed it to your dogs and cats, even. Really? Right? You can make tea for your dogs, for their hip dysplasia, for their coats. Like think of people who are into dog grooming, even show dogs, you need all that silica for their coat to make it beautiful and shiny, but it's also building their bone density, building connective tissues, like doing all these things no at the way. same time. Yeah. So, so you it's make the bamboo tea healthy. for doggies, you put in the dog yeah, bowl. Yeah. And I've been making bamboo food, um, for my dog too, with the shoots. Wow. Yeah. They love it. Yeah. Why they not? like all that stuff. Super yeah, they like healthy. they like mangoes. They like all yeah. of it. Oh Super yeah, yeah. My dog eats bananas and everything. Like, Amazing. Like a good Costa Rican <laughs> dog. <laughs> uh, did you get him down there? No. Or, yeah. But you know, the like it's any animal. tropical dog should eat a banana. Yeah. Like when you live in Costa Rica, which I lived in Costa Rica a lot, you know, uh, if you take a carrot to a horse, they're like. What, what do I do with this? But if you take them a banana, they know exactly what to do. Wow. Or a mango. Like every animal knows what a mango and banana is. Because <laughs> they, like, you have them everywhere. That's what they grow up with. Yeah, of course. That's so funny. Right? That's what we should do here. Totally. We Costa Rica opened me up to a lot of that. I met some cool cats out there. Yeah. I mean, they have all this land on this. You don't see anything but fruit trees. Yeah. It's Growing incredible. wild. Right. Like we could do that here. Right. And so like, I mean, this comes back again, like I get a lot of pushback for bamboo, but like 
okay, I was at a house the other day and on the other side of the yard, like naturalized into the woods was 30 foot tall cassava trees. Does anybody have a problem with that? Like, what about honeybees? What about earthworms? They're non-native too, you know, but these are all things that are usable. So like if we up our education on the usability of these things, and by the way, Anybody out there who's really struggling and is like, I want to get into this and I just don't have any resources, go to the invasive species list and pick a plant because all those plants were brought here for a reason and they're just underused. Interesting. Right? Like look at they Australian pine. They were reason. brought here because they were superpowers in certain things. Wow. Right? Wait, by the way, because I've never even had that. Maybe I'm just an outlier, but like, I was like, oh, it just ended up on the boat or whatever. No, they Well, were, earthworms did. They, they, they ended up on the boat <laughs> and nobody's trying to kick them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they, have a great, they have a great use. Or the honeybees. Right. We did bring those. We brought those. But like the whole think thing. Think about that. Like, that's, that's just a trip to think about going across the ocean with like plants. Like they were probably into it. Of course. Yeah. Fairchilds. Fairchilds was huge on bamboo. Really? Huge. He is, his ultimate goal was to get bamboo across all of the southeast united states and make it the number one plantation plant is that right because of the usability of it but what the timber industry shut it down is that right mm -hmm. big timber big timber so who was it flagler or uh excuse fairchild. me fairchild fairchild jeez yeah. so down in miami yeah what was it that was probably like 100 years ago uh in the late 1800s in the late 1800s in, yeah and then even into the 1920s uh once a year i do an event out at the tabasco corporation so they he was part of the whole thing and they were bringing in plants from all over the world and a lot of them were bamboos wow yeah to use and there was a substation set up in brooksville where they were testing them out and there's still a station down in puerto rico where a lot of the bamboos were brought to. So cool. Yeah. They could yeah. grow. Yeah, it's, it's it's amazing what we can do here in this like amazing We pot. underutilize a lot of our resources. Like the fact that we legalize the ability to cut down a 250-year-old oak tree and burn it on site and not even make anything from it in order to build a housing unit should be actually criminal. Wow. Like the amount that we are throwing away and the unsustainability of the way that we are living has got to come to fruition at some time. I don't right. know how we continue to up our game on that. And part of it is like our training of our children that they have no connection with the value of what these things are. They don't know what it takes to grow a tomato or harvest a tomato. And first of all, you don't need a permit, a license, a degree, or anything to grow plants, okay? Do, please, dear God, I get this a lot where people are like, I don't feel qualified to grow plants. It's like, you come from an incredible history of people who have grown plants, or you would not be here. Yeah. Ever. Wait, but right? you're right. We're training our but children. But we are training to not value. our generation to not have any connection or knowledge about how to create the things that actually sustain them and how they sustain them, right? So we have to switch that around. Wow. It starts with all of and that's why like what you do is so important yeah. because you have the voice of a younger generation. And then we need people younger than you. Yeah. Right. We need like the Big 12 time. year olds and the eight year olds and this, you know, these kids so yeah. that they know how what food is and how to grow it. Because right now, I'm sure you get this. But 30 years ago, when I started talking to people and educating people around food and planting and stuff, the questions that I was getting is nothing compared to what's happening now. Now I have people that whole generations are up in their 40s and have never planted a plant. They've never taken their feet, their, put their feet on the ground. They've never worked outside in a garden. They've never grown a tomato. They've never, you know, eaten something from wow. the garden. All of those things are not only completely foreign to them, they're completely terrified of it. The idea of going out and picking something and eating it, 
mm. is so far off of their comfort zone Seriously. that it's it's an issue. Wow. And so what do you that, think that is, is it's training. We've trained yeah. everybody to go to the grocery store to buy food. Value right. It's not their idea. That's not what we do. And that's we don't not grow what we do. what's in the grocery store. Most of that. It's our yeah. Uh, seriously, man. Yeah, and like that's so. not a good identity to have. Is what we're trying to say. I, like at least is what I'm hearing from you. Like yeah. our identity is like, hey, no, that's not for me. Like that's not my. Right. Well, well and it, it. I mean, it's a problem because we don't hold value on a 250 year old oak tree that's where my house want to go you know like we don't hold value of the food that we're eating so we'll throw half of it away if we don't need it mm. we don't hold value on the piece of plastic that my starbucks coffee came in because i'm just gonna throw it away because i never see it again we don't hold value on what it means to work outside there's a woman um her name is molly I heard her on a podcast and she said something that's very controversial, but I think is really well said. She's from Sow a Heart Farm in California. And she said, you know, a lot of people talk about that only rich people can afford regenerative ag or organic ag. Right. She says, actually, I'm going to say something. She says, I think it's a privilege to eat cheap food that people pay for, other people pay for with their health and well-being. And she says, what I mean by this is the farm workers that come in that most are undocumented and all these different situations that we are, we don't track their health. The people who are handling our food, who are handling pesticides and chemicals, those people are sick way higher than the rest of the people in the United States but we don't know about this because we don't track them. And they are getting sicker because they live in areas that are aerial sprayed or sprayed. They are touching residue of spray all the time. They are spraying themselves. And then they're going back to the countries that they came from or here in the United States and they're getting sick. They're, they're not able to have children, they have cancers in very short periods of time. Our cheap food is, is a direct result of what they are giving up in their lives. Wow. That's powerful. When you frame it like that, man, it's a little bit more of a privilege to eat all that. Exactly. Wow. Yeah, it's super powerful. And so we think a lot, and I think there's a lot of information about the food that we eat and how that's impacting us. But I think we also need to think of the food we eat and how it's impacting others. Wow. Big time. Yeah. There's a whole system we're a part of. We don't even, you know, we outsource it. Because we'd have no connection to it. Because yeah. we show up at Publix and we buy something that's there and we know what it is. And we've been trained to do that. And half of it is not even food. They even, we all know it. Right. What's insane is like everyone talks about it. Like, right. It's crazy. Right. So, what gives? How do we change this? Yeah. How like, do we and by the it? way, why is exactly, I want to know. Yeah. And what I also want to know is people don't value the oak tree, the 250 year old oak tree because of right awareness and education yeah. like you're talking about. Andy says that too. Awareness really is the key. But like, why is that oak tree valuable for people who don't see it maybe right now, yeah. which is okay. Well, I think part of it is, is that, that we have to start with our education systems and in general, there are a certain amount of people that are feeling this and actually almost everybody if i have a face-to-face -face conversation with agrees with all the stuff that we just talked about yeah everybody <laughs> totally they get confused about how to implement it and they get overwhelmed and like the choices and decisions and things and so then you default back to what you've always done because that's easier yeah. so the i think the real key is taking baby steps I love that. Just adding in. Right? Right. Adding in. Like you start with one plant. Right. Start with one bamboo. Yeah. Start with one thing and add it in. And it's about expanding your comfort zone, right? Because mm. expanding your comfort zone can look like eating bamboo or eating katuk, right? Yeah. But it can also <laughs> look like expanding your mindset of what food looks like, right? Yeah. 
And once you start to do that and realize how many boxes we've been trained to be within, you start to realize like, oh, wow, I had no idea that that was like something that I had a box around, right? And it starts to open and expand you in ways that you have no idea where that's going to lead. Wow. It's incredible, yeah, right? Yeah, true. Like, and it's expanding that comfort zone, like you say. Yeah. And as we get older. In the plan game, baby. In the plan game. Yeah. As we get older, <laughs> our propensity yeah. is to get more rigid, more structured, and less resilient and less flexible, right? You want to fight that every step of the way yeah. with everything you have because that's how you get to be the no, 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 don't you do that and put your <laughs> on it like two inches you're right you're right though. <laughs> you're right. right yeah who it's... wants to be that nobody wow. starts out wanting to be that wow. and somehow we get there so <laughs> how do we undo that right. like seriously how do we not become that <laughs> so much right so funny right yeah so i'm learning right it's a lot of unconditioning what we were i'm learning right it starts with that it starts with that education i'm learning we're really fortunate in a way that social media is a fast track to a lot of different ways to look at the world yeah totally that's what we're doing right now we're sharing this it's so yeah. good I appreciate you coming and sharing all this wisdom. Oh, I appreciate being mm -hmm. here. Yeah. This is amazing. It's always so much deeper than, you know, mm -hmm. just the bamboo, right? It's always. It always is. <laughs> it always is. I mean, and I didn't even know about, like, I, now I have a hundred questions about what you fed the elephants and the giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, as a few, like, <laughs> asks on certain things, I'll put out there a few things that people can think about small and big perfect that they can do um one small thing is buy a ticket and come to the convergence that's a small thing that's taking a big action and it you're educating yourself and supporting others 100 right? percent a, a next step is to add one plant into your yard one plant that you have no idea what to do with and research it and just start with one plant Figure that plan out, figure out how to mm. cook it, figure out what to do with it. I'm going to do this challenge. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now one plan. Let let's do one it. Plant. Is that the big challenge too for everybody? What's up? So that the little, the little challenge was mm -hmm. to get the ticket, which yeah. everyone should do 100% right yeah, now because yeah. it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Guaranteed. And then the big challenge is crossing that threshold and getting one plan. Okay. One actionable step. Actionable steps, actionable. right? Actionable, attainable steps, right? Towards a goal. And it's not about like getting there the second or next week or, you know, but it's about getting there. Mm. And it's about the journey. You know, 100%. the thing is, is about like, this is always a big question. Like how, do, how big does bamboo actually get when it's fully grown? And it's like, Plants don't work that way. Like plants are either growing or they're dying. They're not fully grown. A tree is not fully grown. They might meet, you know, maximum wow. height or something. But it doesn't a plant work does way. it doesn't work that way. Wow. Like plants either living or dying. Like it's they're growing or they're not growing, right? So like we're just know. gonna like write them off. Like it's like when we get to like six feet or something, it's like oh, okay, they're just they're full. full. They're done. We're done. With we're growth. done. Like that's enough. <laughs> Stop right there. <laughs> Oh stop right goodness. there mango tree we're all done you can just it stop doesn't, it doesn't work like that it doesn't right? work that way so these are like you know wow. these mindsets of what we box things in and getting to know and really connecting with that connecting with our food connecting with one plant connecting with foraging you know a next step would be find somebody that you can go on nature walks and forage because okay i get that a lot of you out there might live in situations where you can't grow food okay yes. but you can forage bidens almost anywhere yeah. right so and do it in areas that aren't getting sprayed right exactly and just be in like little air, nat natural areas i mean okay your food in your grocery store is getting sprayed so i mean worst case scenario <laughs> like that spray that's going on these is not even remotely close yeah. to what's going on those but so some people don't live in stress too hard about some that some people are in apartment complexes <clears throat> right. and stuff though yeah, yeah like you know yeah i mean obviously 
but you're right. The more no, wild, the better. But you're right. There's no, there is no excuse if you if you live in a condo or something. Yeah. We could utilize. So the this next space. thing would be to find a plant. Yeah. Biden's is a great one. Yeah. As an entry level plant, that if you can't grow things where you live, go out and collect those and bring those into your life and take the actionable step of eating a wild foraged plant that makes you more resilient. Right. So that's the next ask. Then from there, we've got a few bigger asks. So one thing is I have a couple of projects going on. These are kind of like, so on my free time, yeah, what yeah. I like to do is projects that make bigger impacts. And one of the ones I'm working on is clean water. So if anybody out there is interested in being a part of a project that is a clean water initiative for Lake Okeechobee, I have one project that's trying to fundraise 6000 and one that's trying to raise 100000 for cleaning up Okeechobee. Amazing. So Lake Okeechobee. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Lake Okeechobee. can you, you got to send me this so people yeah. can go do it. Yeah. yeah. So we also have sponsorships for the Convergence. And... Um, Cool. So those are like? like money things, right? Because sometimes for some people, it's easier to just write a check and to make an impact that way. Yeah. And that's cool. Yeah. Amazing for the yep. convergence. Yep. Amazing. Because yep. you guys are technically like a non non -profit. nonprofit. Cool. Yeah, nonprofit. So this year, our nonprofit money <clears throat> is going towards an educational initiative that we've started. This is going to be an open source education platform where it's going to be curriculum based that lets teachers know so let's i'm just going to throw out an example biochar okay so the biochar sheet would be like the materials that you need to make biochar how you actually make it wow. um what it's teaching and where it fits in a curriculum so that you can check off the boxes of like you know, biology, 10th grade fits under these categories, but it'll tell you exactly where it's going to fit. And so this it. is going to be all open source information that will help incorporate um, permaculture, but more like homesteading and planting and growing into curriculum that teachers that can then access and utilize at their schools. And so part of what the money for the convergence will be, will be to go to create this open source curriculum. Wow. Yeah. What an amazing thing to yeah. put it towards. Yeah. Yeah. So an open source so anybody can utilize exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. And it'll already say like the biggest feedback that I get from teachers is not knowing what where they can put it into the curriculum because they have criteria of everything that they have to cover throughout the year. Yes. And so this will give them the exact places that they can put it cool yeah for the required curriculum exactly Amazing. exactly yeah so it's about implementing into our education system and teaching the kids the tools that they need in order to survive the fact that we get all the way through to a college level degree without knowing how to grow food medicine or build a house is is like ridiculous it's insane I mean, like these, these are bad. This is what you need to survive. And what you're food, <laughs> medicine, and build a house. Like, what? <laughs> and it's and we've said it before. They want a nation of workers, not a nation of thinkers. You know, they don't want. They don't. Yeah. Like I, meaning, like yeah, George. Yeah, I I really feel like you know we have a lot of kids who are coming up on the spectrum. I was put on. I was told wow. I was on the spectrum. No and then way. what we do is we medicate them. Right. I was medicated. I see I my whole career. Right. <laughs> I was one of them. So as a kid, I wasn't able to sit still, focus or read. Right. But as a 56 year old woman, I challenge anybody out there to come work with me. Mm. I'm out in July working full on, yeah. full sun full, <laughs> all day. Like uh, I'll take it on. Come work with me. <laughs> And see yeah, but the school up. system kind of you know shamed you for not being like learning like them. Is that right? What? Yeah. So what I'm saying is like we're putting all these kids on medication. These are our next kids that could like take kogan grass and make like the next amazing thing out of it instead of it being on our invasive species and spraying, mm. spraying glyphosate on it everywhere. You know, I'm just saying the like these are our <laughs> really high energy. Exactly. Make it, get it done, and we're medicating it out of them. To like to lessen their magic. Right. And yeah. we need people to go out there and work. I agree. <laughs> right? yeah. 
It's you a take superpower. You take different too. It's yeah. a superpower. It ADHD is a superpower. Oh, I, 100%. I'm a hundred percent on board. Everybody <laughs> should know that ADHD is Thank a superpower, you. and people who have it are far better off than without it. Tell because them. we think outside the box, we are highly creative, and we have lots of energy to get stuff done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable. Gener yeah, we generate. We generate it. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Don't, yeah. Right. And so <laughs> if you're a person who has been put on medication through your life, I just really I highly challenge you to try and get off of it. Mm. It took me a long time, and but it's well worth it. Amazing. And finding your way and knowing that who you are is not damaged or broken or wrong in any way, shape, or form, that you are an actual superhuman being. Wow. You're far better off and far more creative than any most of the people out there and own that. Mm, own it. I love that. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah so powerful. Is there anything else? I mean, I feel like oh we had in there. That's so Covered good. Covered a lot. <laughs> yeah. Thank Big you. tea from your bamboo. Eat your bamboo. It's a perennial vegetable. Yes. Feed it to your animals. They got their homework now. Yep. We're all we'll good. We'll see you on the other side, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Shanti. Awesome. Thank you. Peace, y'all. Hey, guys. Another awesome video. Thank you for watching and all your support. Hey, do me a favor. Click the like and subscribe button down below if you haven't already. It goes a long way. We'll see you in the next one.